Hey y'all, my name is Priscilla and welcome back to my channel, Bookie Charm. For today's video, I wanted to talk about my favorite books that I read from last year. I debated whether or not I wanted to do a favorites video since it's going to probably go out pretty late, but I have a favorites video from every year that I've been on booktube, so I'll leave the others linked down below. I couldn't just not do 2019. So this is going to be a list of books that I just loved or adored or admired for some reason from last year that I think really defined my year of reading that year. I usually structure these videos so I only have a top five and maybe one or two honorable mentions. Uh, I feel like the number of books that I read last year warranted that I go over that a little bit, but not too much because then there's nothing stopping me from doing like a top 10 or 15 or 20 or hell, why not top 30, right? And then at that point, it's, it's ridiculous. So um, I think I have a top eight and an honorable mention. So let's go ahead and start talking about these books. So first up for my honorable mention, I wanted to mention Cantoras by Carolina de Robertis. This is historical fiction and its own voices for the queer Latinx representation. So this book is so, so good and so, I think, unique because it's a book that's written by queer Latinx women for queer Latinx women. I've read another book by her. I read The Gods of Thongo, I believe the year before. So I think it's appropriate that I loved this book and then I read another book from her this year. So this is a book that follows five queer women in Uruguay and with the backdrop of the Uruguayan revolution. I really liked the found family in this book. I really liked that they had a home together that they could go to to truly be themselves and to explore those connections with each other and support one another when no one else seems to in their regular day-to-day -day lives. So um, I really just enjoyed the characters, the growth, the lifelong image that we get of these women. I did have some issues with the pacing in this book, so I think that's why it's not absolutely a favorite, but still worth an honorable mention. So on to my favorites. I am not going to be ranking these. I'm just going to be talking about them in the order that I read them through the year because I couldn't possibly rank them. So first up in the year, I read Hurricane Child by Kaysen Callender. Hurricane Child is a wonderful middle grade, I think set a precedence for me in 2019 because a lot of books, a lot of middle grade books really did it for me that year. And this is a book that follows Caroline, who is a, a young girl that just has a lot of issues. I think she's being plagued with depression. She's um, missing her mother who has gone missing and she doesn't know why. And she's also dealing with homophobia and coming to terms with a crush that she has on a girl in her class. This book is own voices for the Caribbean and queer representation as well as the black representation. and. It, it's it's magical and I just really loved it. I remember feeling like after I finished reading this, I felt like this tingling sensation. It was just perfection in so many ways. There's um, these spirits that are haunting Caroline quite metaphorically with the the demons that she has with the homophobia that she's dealing with. There's a lot of topics of internalized homophobia, especially related to religion and as well as that depression that she's going through. And Caroline is one of those characters that I'm going to remember. She's so headstrong, so confident, so um, so honest with herself, but also just so, I, I wanna give her a hug. I want her to be okay. And I really, really recommend this book. Then you already know it's coming, but Dawn by Octavia Butler was another favorite because uh, I did a full review of this book and I can't stop talking about it, obviously. I think I've mentioned it in just about like every video <laughs> in the past few weeks. But um, Dawn is the first in the Lilith Brood slash Xenogenesis series that follows Lilith, who is a black woman that is abducted by aliens. In the first book and uh, these aliens have a vision for the future they have a vision for humanity and for lilith and this series starts off so so strong um dawn is my favorite in the series it kind of slowly tapers off as you read the next two books but still such a very very unique science fiction book uh, i think at the core these books are about humanity what it means to be human what is consent and what does the future look like with other 
people with other beings that are different than us. So I highly recommend you check out my review video if you'd like to know more, but um, I could go on for a while about Dawn. <laughs> okay, so next up I read Freshwater by Akweke Emeze. This book is so, 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 so good, so unique. Also very triggering, so I'll mention that I'm gonna leave trigger warnings for any of these books that I may forget in the description below, so make sure to check that. But this book is uh, somewhat autobiographical graphical but I think would mostly be described as literary fiction that follows our main character Ada who is a Nigerian woman that is born with one foot on the other side and that means that she has all these fractured selves so she has these gods that are within her that are in this marble room of her mind that speak to her and that ultimately want her to commit suicide. Um, this book is inspired by Meze's own journey as they come to terms with their, their, their being, their um, identity as an Obanje, having these other gods within them, these other spirits within them. This book, I think, I think Ariel said it best at She Wants Addiction, I'll make sure to link her below. But um, this book I think is about a journey to wholeness and to understanding your whole being. Um, this book is about Ada. Ada's um, obviously her very suicidal ideation. Um, there's a sexual assault in this book. Her coming of age and understanding the deepest darkest parts of herself. And I think that that's what I love so much about it. Just Ada just understanding herself at the deepest deepest level. The writing in this is also some of the most unique writing that I've read all year, so it had to make this list. Then more middle grade because I love The First Rule of Punk by Celia C. Perez. This is a middle grade story that is own voices for the Mexican American representation and we follow our main character named Malu who is moving from Florida to live with her mother in Chicago. She's actually biracial, her mother is Mexican and her father is white. And I think that this book is most about understanding that being Mexican doesn't mean one thing, that she can be her her full self and uh, she doesn't have to compromise her her interest in punk music or her interest in being Mexican-American and Mexican-American mu music because Malu actually discovers pretty early on in this book that there are lots of punk Mexican-American Chicana artists out there and I think this is a book that I would have just loved so much if I had had it when I was younger. Th this is sort of a tangent but if you don't know there's actually a deep root um, history with Latinx folks and rock music and metal and uh, punk music. Um, I'll link a podcast down below that talks about the origins of metal of fascination and obsession in Latinx uh, countries because there, there's a lot of historical reasons for that. There's a lot of corruption in the political government uh, climates of a lot of Latinx countries that just really align a lot with the sentiments in metal rock music, uh, with the rebellion, with the fighting against uh, corrupt systems. The, the way that this story ha includes vines and historical um, accounts and history with uh, Latinx identity, it just really meant a lot to me. I loved Malou's uh, journey to uh, the end of this book that climaxes in a performance with her school band and it just warms my heart. I love it so much <laughs> and I uh, highly recommend First Rule of Punk. Then I read the second book in the Love Sugar Magic trilogy called A Sprinkle of Spirits by Ana Mariano. This is on voices for the Mexican-American representation and this is probably going to be one of my favorite series of all time. This is another middle grade. I don't know if I've said that already, but it follows our main character Leo who is the youngest in a family of Cocinera Brujas that works in, that lives in her small town in Texas and that helps her family run their bakery in this second book now. There's a lot to love about this series for me. This is one of the series that I first read that I truly saw myself represented. A lot of Latinx stories deal with trauma, with healing, which I think is very important, but also there's joy to be had in being Mexican-American and in the family relationships and in the friendships that you have and the values that you hold dear to your heart, I think are really shown in this book and just a fun way. And um, that's not to say there's not any conflict in this book. I mean, it is a middle grade story about magic and spells, but there is a, some very low stakes conflict in this book that just make it a very, very fun read. This book is much of the same, I think, of the first book 
but with um, more development of characters. The first book features uh, Dia de los Muertos. It centers around that celebration. This one starts off with Dia de los Reyes. Yeah, I can't say too much. It's the second in the series, so I don't want to give away too much about the plot, but spirits start popping up out of town and Leo's um, gonna be more involved with her family and the magic than she was in the first book. So um, it's really great, really special to me. Highly recommend it. Then I read Dominicana by Angie Cruz. This was a book I read during Latinx uh, Hispanic Heritage Month and I'm so glad that I picked it up because it's another book that meant so much to me. Okay, so my camera just died. Apologies if there's a shift, but I have one more book to talk about. And the last book to make this favorites list was Know My Name by Chanel Miller. Surprisingly, this is the only nonfiction book to make the list, and it was the best memoir that I read in 2019. So uh, I also did a video where I reviewed this memoir along with another book by Saeed Jones, How We Fight For Our Lives. Um, Chanel Miller's book was one that I was highly anticipating, and it follows uh, Chanel Miller as she understands the um, the entire process of the trial that um, was prosecuting Brock Turner for his horrendous act the night that she was raped. And this is a story that broke, I think, when her Jane Doe anonymous letter went out her victim impact statement and I knew that her voice was going to be important and that she had a damn great ability to write and tell her story. So I'm so glad that she took on her story and is telling it for the first time in this book. This book is just so important and so beautifully written, so direct in its writing style, but also allowing the reader into one of the darkest moments of Miller's life and to understand that uh, this trauma, this event isn't the only thing that's going to define her and that she's taking ownership of this story. And I really loved it for that. Um, I think that you should definitely pick this up if you're able, but um, I'm going to link my video where you can check out more of my thoughts in that about after reading that book. But so, so happy that so many people are picking it up and that it's getting a lot of that rec uh, recognition that it deserves because it's, it's such a good book. But those are my favorites from the year 2019. Uh, I would love to hear from you if you had any the books make your favorites list that I mentioned here. But that's my video for this year. So uh, thank you so much for watching and I hope to catch you in the next video. Bye.